I'm so good. Okay, I'm freaking out because I actually do remember, I'm having a little deja vu. I remember interviewing you when it was over. And it was kind of, a, you you saw the beauty in being an Olympian, mm -hmm. but you were clearly like, oh, well, th that's the end of this. Yeah. Can you believe we're sitting here talking? No. And you've got a silver <laughs> medal around your right? neck. Right? I know. I would have never thought. You know, I was supposed to be flying home, but here I am and just feeling... Just super grateful. Tell me how that went down. So you yeah. you basically had your your about your bags were packed and you mm -hmm. were getting ready to head home. Then what happened? Yeah. So we were watching team finals and yeah. of course you know things didn't go as planned. And I remember um, we kind of got a text message. Um, you know Simone was talking to Cecile saying Michaela can't go home. We might need to have her you know compete in case I can't you know figure it out in the next couple days. So I decided to stay and train vault in case I needed to go in. Well, so. you said in one of your social media posts, you mentioned Simone. Yes. And you said, Simone, uh, we're, I'm doing this for us. Mm -hmm. what, what did that mean? Um, you know, Simone and I have been the OGs of the team, and it's just been so fun to have that leadership and to kind of guide the younger generation. And I feel like, you know, after everything that she's been through, and um, it's just been, you know, kind of hard on her, but she's really been able to stay positive through it all. And so she's definitely inspired me. And I said, you know what? Like, you were supposed to have this opportunity, but I'm so grateful to be able to step in for you, and I wanted to do this for us. You wanted to do this for us. Yeah. It's so cool. Well, she did. she's doing something else for coming up tomorrow. She has announced she's going to compete yes, on the beach. Yes, so beam. excited. Okay, you're her ride or die. Mm -hmm. You're her. You're one of her besties. Were you surprised when you heard the news? Um, a little bit, but honestly, I've been you know talking to her every single day, and she's you know kind of been like, I think Beam Beam's going to be the one. So I'm really excited for her. I'm going to cheer on so hard and just really hope that she can medal and just do the dismount of her life. I know she's been trying to work on different dismounts and figuring yeah. things out. So it's going to be so cool. And I'm so happy for her. Why would Beam be the one? Because I think people are confused about yes. which yeah. event and why. Mm -hmm. Why would it be the one? Yeah, um, you know, kind of with having twisties and being a gymnast, that's definitely something you don't want to go through. And, um, you know, beam, you're not really doing much twisting things. It's more just skills. So for her, the only thing that she has was the dismount. And so yeah. she's been able to work a double pike and try different things. So mm -hmm. I think she's going to go for that. So that's really good. So no twisties for her, hopefully. One of the favorite images I have from these games is when you nailed your vault and there was a shot of your posse, led mm -hmm. by Simone, screaming for you, mm -hmm. cheering for you. Could you feel them and sense them when you were? I could feel it down there. I was running for my second vault, and I'm like, Simone's cheering so loud. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like I feel like I was gonna be distracted almost. So I could hear them up there. Even the guys' team was just so loud. It was insane. So that definitely was much needed. And just real quickly, uh, a few hours ago, Jade Carey just nailed it. She yeah. got a gold medal. I mean, I feel like Team USA, every single person on the team has a medal. Which is so awesome. That is so cool. You know, I never would have thought this was going to happen. Even for me, I thought I was maybe going to be the only one walking yeah. home without one. So that's really uh -huh. cool that I was able to place, you know, silver. And um, watching Jade tonight after that comeback was just incredible. I'm so happy for her. She deserves it. Michaela, your story is one for the ages. It tells you never to give up. When you think it's over, it is not over. You got your medal. We're super proud of you, you, and uh, America's proud of you, too. Thank you. All right, honey. Thanks good talking so to you. you too. How about that, Craig? Yes, How are. about that, Craig? Yes, How about Michaela? Michaela <laughs> Come on. Uh, thank yeah. you, Michaela. Thank you. A quick reminder, by the way, you can catch every minute of these Tokyo Olympics live. All you have to do is scan the QR code on your screen for the NBC Sports app. When we come back on a Monday morning, our one-on-one -on -one with the star of swimming here in Tokyo, Caleb Dressel, he came into these Olympics with high expectations, and he met them. In fact, you could argue he exceeded them. Five gold medals in all. What he is saying about that success, what he's saying about his Olympic experience, and what's next right after this. She sparkled. Lori Hernandez joins us now. Lori, it was a dazzling performance. You know Jade very well. Just by watching that interview, tell me what you think. Oh, I mean, this is the <laughs> happiest personally that I've ever seen her, but, you know, she just got a gold, so right. I feel like that makes sense. She had such a wonderful routine. Her start value is so high, and I, I'm really glad that I she mean, was able to go out. She struggled on the vault the day before. We yeah. knew because she was, she was very, very upset. So to go from that to this yeah. is pretty incredible. It shows what she's kind of made up. Yeah, you have to clear your head when something like that happens, yeah. and I'm so glad that she was able to go and just hit a nice routine. Okay, let's talk about Simone. This is a big story. We've all been kind of wringing our hands. Is she going to compete? There's only one thing left, and it's the beam. 
First of all, were you surprised when you found out that she was going to be competing again? Honestly, I kind of had no expectations yeah. to figure out if she was going to compete or not. Um, I'm really glad that she is just because, you know, for her own and, and to be out here and to just qualify to making this team, it is a huge accomplishment to be able to compete and, and enjoy herself. So as long as she's happy, I think that's the most important thing. We know that Simone's been going through what uh, you guys understand is called the twisties. It's uh, when you yes. have trouble, like, twisting around. So would you explain, because a lot of us don't really understand, why would the beam be the most appealing of all of the different, um, you know, apparatuses? Yeah, I mean... For starters, it is upright. Yeah. When you're on bars, you yeah. are swinging upside down consistently, and so it is common for especially dismounts in a video that she had posted. Um, you see her literally getting lost uh -huh. in the air, and that skill happens on vault. It happens on floor. Um, the Biles is a triple twisting double back. If you get lost on that, that is a huge, it is a huge mm -hmm. safety hazard. So I think beam is probably the safest route in terms of doing skills that don't have too many twists. Um, I'm curious to see what she'll do for her dismount, but I have a feeling she's going to do very well. So. You know Simone very well because you were on the team with her. You know her emotionally, you know her heart, you know her mind, you know all this. Do you think that she's ready for this? I honestly, if yeah. Simone says, you know what, <laughs> I'm going out and I'm competing beam, it sounds like she is ready. So yeah. um, at the end of the day, it's just making sure she knows we support her no matter what. It doesn't matter the outcome. She is an incredible athlete. So. Yeah, well, she, she's got a lot of people rooting for her. Lori, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And we're going to chat with another Olympic medalist, Michaela Skinner. She's sitting right over. Hey, girl. <laughs> she's got her silver medal. We're going to talk about that. And we're going to watch some of the action and gymnastics, track and field, and a lot more during NBC's primetime coverage. It starts at 8 p.m. Eastern. Miss Guthrie, back to you. Gotta be. When we moved to California, my parents built an 80s vert ramp. I was nine years old, and I would skate there every day. That's just really how I learned all my tricks, and my skating improved like so much because of it. I had a bunch of vert ramp sessions where everyone comes over to music, cook, and skate. I remember looking outside my window like, oh, there's Tony Hawk skating in my backyard. Just seeing that in person was incredible. I was also getting into contests at that age. I was probably like 11, and then that's when Tony Hawk said there's like Olympics in four years, and then that we'd just be like, oh, well, we have to take it a little bit more serious and just skate every day. So I'd get up in the morning with my dad, and he'd help me get tricks because he used to be a skater. Right, Zoner, she's one to watch here to represent the U.S. in 2020. I think that's what really helped me progress, and I'm thankful for my parents being so supportive and bullying that. Get it into the spirit.